These are relatively well-established techniques for diagnosing lung cancer. The difference is we've never used them in this scenario. So they, these techniques are often used to diagnose lung cancer up front. But now we're in a situation where patients who are developing progressive disease, traditionally oncologists have carried on with their second-line treatment or third-line treatment, but now what we're increasingly trying to do is re-biopsy the area that's progressing. Um, and that gives us more insight into why the tumour has become resistant to the first-line treatment and it allows us to tailor our treatment uh, in the second-line setting much better to that patient. So this is using the same techniques but in a, in a different scenario. And there are differences. So patient acceptability is a key thing that we need to discuss with patients and um, some recent data published at the World Lung Cancer Conference suggested uh, that about 82% of patients would agree to a rebiopsy. So not all, but about uh, approximately four fifths. And so the conversation and the communication with patients about what the biopsy involves um, and whether they'd be willing to undergo a repeat becomes really critical. Um, and then the, um, the other thing about these techniques in this setting that's different is that the sensitivity of the test becomes lower. So whereas in the first line setting we would expect a biopsy via EBUS or CT guided biopsy to give uh, over 90% sensitivity, what we find that in the second line setting the sensitivity is considerably lower. And there's several reasons why, why this may be. It may be that the effect of the drug directly on the tumour, um, or alternatively it may be the um, the access to the area that we want to uh, sample is more challenging. So we're increasingly learning about the best way to take biopsies uh, in the second line setting at progression, which is a, a, it's a different discussion with our patients compared to in the first line setting.